Thank you. Again, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Melina. And we're uh, teaching this class from the what we call the Rick Kitchen. We're based in Chicago and we're having a pretty warm summer or summer. We're having a pretty warm March as well. I believe it was like 70 degrees yeah. yesterday. Uh, this class, we're going to be going over our five tips for getting the best, uh, the, the, making your colors last longer. Um, I get the questions all the time about, you know, what are the best tips? They're actually very straightforward. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to show you, you know, starting with uh, going through the differences between the products. And so why don't we take that? Yeah. So we're going to go over which one you need, all purpose or dye more. And we're going to do a little test to show you how um, different fabrics take these two different dyes differently. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set that here and then we'll change over to the um, hands down yeah. so that you can kind of follow along and see the difference. And um, yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna move the camera over. So, you know, mainly we have our all-purpose dye and our dye more. All-purpose is mainly for natural fibers, mm -hmm. cotton, linen, silk, wool, and then for dye more, it's generally for synthetic fibers like polyester, acrylic, and acetate. So I have here 100% polyester napkins, um, and I'm going to create an all-purpose dye bath and a dye more dye bath and kind of show you the difference. All right, I have some hot water here that I boiled up. Rick prefers hot water. If you don't know that, then uh, yeah, now you hot, water. hot water opens up the fibers in the fabric so it can accept the dye. I think the main difference is because when you're dyeing something that's synthetic, you need the water to be really, really warm. Mm -hmm. And when you dye something with all purpose, generally we we suggest like one, the hottest tap water uh, from your sink. Right. I'm just going to go in with just a little bit, about a tablespoon. Remember, we're just testing this, so I'm not going to be super exact, but here's the purple. We have the royal purple in Dymore and then the RIT um, purple in all purpose. And generally, the guide is, is if there's 60% or more polyester, then we suggest that you use Dymore. Yes. And if it's less, then we recommend all purpose. Okay, right, so I um, went ahead and kind of pre-soaked it just to get rid of any finishes that might be on there. I'm gonna dunk her into the purple and it's going to die, um, but just watch, just wait. <laughs> and now we're taking the second one. And then remember this is polyester napkin and this is the dye more dye bath. It's 100% polyester? Mm -hmm, yes. And so we're just gonna let it soak. And I know it looks like this is taking, but let's just wait until we rinse it all out and see what we're working with. Just gonna put it all in together. And so generally the rule of thumb is if you don't know what's in the fabric, then we suggest using Dymore because Dymore can dye synthetics and also is capable of dyeing blends. So if it's a cotton polyester blend, and you do not, or, or any sort of blend, mm -hmm. we definitely just recommend using dye more, especially if you know that it's over 60% synthetic. I think that's probably our number one complaint is like, oh, my fabric didn't dye. And it's typically because that person didn't use the right type of dye for the fabric. So that's kind of like the number one thing you have to kind of look out for. Make sure to check your fabric tags. And unfortunately, if your tag says um, no hot water, then we don't um, recommend dyeing it, unfortunately, because it might alter the fabric and the garment yeah. that you're dyeing. Um, we usually recommend just following the garment tag. Yeah, exactly. Let's rinse these out and see what we're working with. I'm going to take this over to our sink, which is just right over here. Hoping you guys can see this. All right. So this is the all purpose. We'll rinse her out. <laughs> All right. All right. Another thing we also recommend when you're using dye is to wear dark clothes. <laughs> I'm wearing black. <laughs> just for the splashes. 
And then here is the dye more purple. You can kind of see that it took the purple tone much, much better. Um, this is giving a little pink, in my opinion, a little blush. I don't know if the camera is catching it quite as well, but it's quite literally just pink. Um, so it's not the right shade. Obviously not the color that the bottle says, um, but with the uh, dye more, you can see that the color purple is tonally just like much, much closer. And again, you see that I only dipped this in for like what, like 30 seconds. So if we kept it in there longer, you can kind of get some of these like darker tones that you see on here. Um, so yeah, number one is always pick the right dye um, for the right fabric. Um, and yeah. I don't know if you guys can see this, but here's the two comparisons. Awesome. All right, we can move on to the next tip, which is talking about oh, cameras and switch. <laughs> we'll talk about temperature and how important that is. So typically with the two different dyes, we recommend with Dymar, as I was saying before, that you need really high heat. And so anything that's, so we recommend actually that you dye on your stove. So here, what we have is a, a pot that we're heating up water. We try to keep the, the water a little bit below boiling. We don't want there to be a you know hot boiling dye bath and you could get you know potentially hurt if it's too, you know, if the water's too crazy. But we recommend something a little bit below boiling. So usually like 210, 220, degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And then for all purpose, that is, you can, you don't need to die on your stove, but you can die in a, you know, uh, a bucket or a container. And we recommend just the hottest water from your tap. But if you really want a really good, you know, pop of color, mm -hmm. we recommend also supplementing that with water from your stove so that it can be as hot as possible. Now you can also die our all, with all purpose on the stove. Um, and that would even make the colors even more vibrant. Basically, the hotter the water, the more vibrant the color will be. We'll test that out right now. This is um, cold tap water that I just pulled. And we'll also do a bath with hot water. It's really handy having one of these kettles. It really it heats the water off real quick. Um, I'm just gonna label these for you guys so that you see it. Maybe that tape is perfect. Let's that doesn't want to show up. All right. We're gonna go with fuchsia this time. Remember, this one is hot, this one is cold. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, shake the bottle up nicely. Again, just a little splash here because there's only about two and a half cups of water in here. Remember, this is cold and hot. You can already kind of see the color difference. Oh, this is hot. Like one is a little bit darker than the other, even though we put the same amount of dye in. And now we have our two cotton napkins here. First, I'm going to put these into some water here so that we can pre-soak it. You always want to um, pre-soak things just so that it absorbs the dye evenly and you get a nice um, consistent color throughout. We also recommend pre-washing fabric before because that removes any finishes that might be on the fabric. Mm -hmm. Two napkins here. Like this one? Sure. This one. Okay. 
right, Jonathan's putting it in the cold and I am putting it in the hot. Check that. You can already see the very stark difference in tones and colors. And you guys saw that it was the same fuchsia bottle that we poured from. We're not tricking you. There's This isn't petal pink or anything. So pretty crazy that just the temperature alone can impact the vibrancy of your okay. How does heat, would you say, impact like when you're doing more creative techniques like tie-dye? Hmm. So for tie-dyeing, I recommend applying the heat um, at the very end with about like with a microwave or you can just leave it out in the sun to um, really let the heat um, open up the fibers of the shirt because um, no one wants to be tie-dyeing with a scalding hot squeeze bottle. Um, so we recommend just like warm temperature, like nothing too crazy. Um, After you apply the dye. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. And if, if you have something with metal on it, then obviously we wouldn't recommend using a microwave. <laughs> So as Helena said, you could use the sun. Yeah, look at the difference in those. Yeah. It's pretty obvious. Um, but with tie-dye, I recommend either leaving it in the sun, if you can't use a microwave, or you can use a, a hair dryer too, in the hottest setting. Yeah, the hair dryer actually is probably my favorite, especially like when you don't have the sun. Sometimes in Chicago, that's not always a option. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and actually dye this one into this fuchsia color so that I can show you guys what it looks like with the fixative afterwards. Um, and we'll do a little comparison there as well. Just kind of move it over here. Fuchsia is one of my favorites. That's such a nice vibrant pink. Pink was pretty popular this year <laughs> or last year. Yeah, for Halloween, uh, thanks to our, our friend Barbie. <laughs> It's funny to watch all the color trends and how they change based on what's popular. Yeah, like pink was really popular for Halloween this year um, or last year. Yeah, any guesses as to what is going to be the popular Halloween costume for this upcoming year? <laughs> Lauren, pay attention to those comments. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I feel like these two are now similar colors. Same. Yeah. I'm gonna rinse these out really quick, and then we'll do a comparison fixative bath with both of these napkins. Which leads us to our next tip, which we'll talk about in a bit: fixative. Yes. If you do ever have dye on your counters, don't worry, it won't stain. Generally, all you need is some bleach and it will take it right off. Oh, Helena's pulling some out to, to show the wonder <laughs> of bleach. Yeah, people, I think like our number one question is like, how do you guys dye in this very white kitchen of yours? Um, and this is just some diluted bleach with water. And like, it doesn't even really need a lot. We'll let that sit a little bit and... Look at that, it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, something I do regularly here. <laughs> all right, so... I'm gonna give these two pieces that we just dyed a quick rinse. And then we'll do a fixative dye bath for one. And then no fixative for the other one. So that you can see the difference. Okay. Yeah, let's move yeah. that over. Move over. See. Sorry for the shaking. <laughs> All right. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. I'm creating two of our dye baths or fixative dye baths, and we're just going to fill it up with some water. Have you ever dyed directly in the sink? 
oh, I die in the sink all the time. It's actually my preferred place. There we go. Um, you just plug it up and yeah i mean especially for those like bigger three gallon die baths that require like water up to here it's just easier that i can like unplug this instead of trying to pour something over into another receptacle so one of these is just water and one of these is fixative. are you going to be adding fixative yeah i'm going to add fixative now to just one of them and then you guys can see once i start the rinse rinsing afterwards um that one has much less dye in the rinse water, which just means that a lot of the dye has already lifted off of the fabric and is no longer going to rub off or get on anywhere else. All right. And so color stay dye fixative, which is what we're talking about. Oh, there we go. This is a product also available at Michael's. We do say it's optional, but we do highly recommend it. In this it's one. used to reduce bleeding and fading and to make your dye projects last longer. And so, you know, basically it will last more washes, significantly more washes than if you don't use fixative. Exactly. And I personally love using it um, because it just like cuts the rinse time in half afterwards too. Um, and again, I will show you in just a sec. So this one has the fixative. And basically what you do is you fill, you know, another bucket or another container with water, yeah, with exactly. hot water, right? Mm -hmm. And then you add fixative to it and you would pretty much do the same process as if you were done. But instead you're just using fixative instead of dye. Yeah, oftentimes I'll just use the same receptacle. Um, so the same receptacle that I dyed in, I'll just um, empty that out and fill it up with hot water again. And then do the fix it up again. So again, this is the one without. And this is the one with. And you can see that the one with fixative is bleeding more dye out into the uh, fixative bath. But that just basically means that the fixative is pulling the dyes that haven't set onto the fabric out into the water so that it's not just sitting on the fabric. That's also really a nice tool for when you're tie dyeing as well. <laughs> Because it makes sure if you do have like white areas that you're trying to protect, it makes it so that the dye doesn't bleed into those white areas. And then it also like sets the dye that's currently on the fabric itself um, really nicely so that you get brighter colors um, that feel more true to what you see on the bottle. Well, wow, it's noticeably different. The color right it's not you know perfect because we we did put it in a tiny little jar um for more like even coverage i would have used a bigger dye bath so that it would flow freely but this is kind of just for like swatching preferences or um swatching um this practice i suppose um but yeah fix it up no fix it up you can see awesome we're back. <laughs> one of the uh, number one tips also, in addition to what we're talking about, that we're not technically covering, but you brought up, which is a good point, is making sure that the dye bath is big enough so that your fabric moves freely. So you'll see, because these were so small, we weren't, and we weren't agitating the fabric consistently. So the dye wasn't able to get to the fabric consistently. And so you get a lot of even coverage. Yeah. And I would say that is the number one reason why you would ever see a splotch or any sort of you know, imperfection that's not in your fabric is not having enough dye and water in the in your receptacle so that you can move the fabric freely. Yeah, once we're done sharing some of these tips, we're actually going to be dyeing an entire uh, pair of jeans all black. 
So we'll be filling the sink up. Um, we'll get the three gallons of water in here. Um, we'll be able to show you what that kind of looks like um, instead of these like little splashes and captions. But these are fun, but that's not what we're able to do. Yeah, exactly. All right. Now, I wanted to show you guys Ooh, how, yeah, how um, salt and vinegar, which are um, additives that we add into our dye baths based on different materials and how that helps to um, get different materials into brighter, bolder colors. And so typically with salt, we recommend that to be used when you're dyeing cotton, linen, uh, Ramy, rayon, and if you uh, we recommend vinegar for when you use when you're dyeing uh, silk or wool. So we have some wool yarn that Helena is going to be showcasing how important it is to use vinegar in the process and it will be hopefully pretty noticeable. And not only will the vinegar help to um you know, make the color look more saturated, but it'll also add to the longevity of the color as well. There's going to be less fading. Um, it just really helps to bind the dyes onto the fibers itself. All right, number one, got to get this wet. I don't ever like putting dry things into a dye bath unless you want a really harsh dye line. What color are you going to do for this one? I don't know. We haven't pulled a color for this one yet. Do you want to pick one? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go a little moodier. Try Marigold. Ooh. Okay. One of my favorites. You can go ahead and uh, pour some in there. Okay. One key thing always when we when you're dying is we recommend shaking the bottle first. Because the dye can pull, you know, can sit. And so we want to make sure it's evenly in the liquid when you pour it into your dye bath. Pour a little. Now the marigold you might see in the store looks a little different. This was an earlier version when we realized the text was too dark <laughs> and it's now white on the bottle. So if you go into the store and see marigold and you're like, that's not what I saw on the live with Jonathan and Helena, it's because it's now in a white box. All right. I feel like I'm making some black videos. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, let's uh, stir it. Oh, yes. There's a picture there. Um, got some vinegar, this is what we were talking about. Um, we will add it to the one that you just stirred. And usually you wanna add about like a cup for three gallons, um, but since we only have about two and a half cups here, I'm just gonna do like a tablespoon. All right, stir that in. I'm just gonna dip one side into the vinegar and dip the other side into the non-vinegar dye bath and hopefully you guys can see how it impacts the dyes. Um, and this is Lion Brand's Fisherman Wool dye, I believe. And again, kind of similarly with the um, Dye More and All Purpose um, one that we did, you won't be able to tell the difference until you rinse. Because when you rinse, the dye is either going to all rinse out because you didn't use the right one or the right technique or the right um, additives in there, or it's going to look really great. Mm -hmm. One nice thing about using liquid dye is that you don't have to stir out the the container that much because it's already pre-mixed and, and in a liquid format. Mm -hmm. uh, when we use our powder dyes though, which um, are also great, but we do recommend since they're very concentrated that you stir a lot more to make sure that the dye is evenly dispersed in the container. Okay. I'm gonna move this over into the sink and we'll rinse it out to see how the vinegar sets the dye. I love this shade. I know, it's such a pretty color. I really thought this was like a fall color, but I don't know. I'm going to be wearing her this spring and summer. I recently dyed all my sheets in the, in the marigold. <laughs> all right. Rinse them out. Yeah, we can go on the overhead so you can see. Yes. We'll move you over again. 
You can kind of see like without the vinegar, can you see the, the dye kind of washing out? Oh yeah, that's super noticeable. Um, as you can see, it's like, it looked darker when we pulled it right out of the dye bath. But again, like I said, you really can't tell until you rinse it out and see how much of the dye actually has penetrated into your fibers versus how much of it is just like sitting there um, waiting to be rinsed out like that. And then you can even tell like more has rinsed out here than here, it's just the rinse water is darker. Um, uh, this side with the vinegar. Oh, yeah. Just uh, re ring this out. And um, when things are wet, they're going to generally look a little bit more uh, saturated, and then as they dry, it'll lighten up. So even from this shade, it'll get darker if we just, or it'll get lighter as it dries. So this is the side with the vinegar. And this is the side without. It's very difficult to tell on camera. But it's, it's real. But it's real. I can see it in person. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if we have it over the white, we'll be able to see it better. Scoot back over yes. here. <laughs> no, can you tell? This is the vinegar side. And then this is the side without vinegar. I'm just going to leave it soaking for a little bit longer um, and then revisit it at the end to kind of do a. Yeah, let's do that. Difference. Yeah. And then I'll put these guys back in here. And hopefully by the end of this, they'll have picked up some more color um, to kind of show you the difference. And I'll let them hang out here. And then we'll move on to our next. All right. Next, we are going to combine all of those tips that we just shared to dye these jeans, these blue jeans that we have. They're just um, cotton blue jeans your run of the mill, um, and we're going to be using the back to black kit, which is my favorite thing ever. Um, yeah, so this is available at Michael's. It contains our darkest dye we've ever made. Ever. Jet, oh, it's right here, jet black, ever. <laughs> Set on the bottle. I have too much black clothing, says no one ever. It's especially important when you're dyeing things to wear black clothing. And basically, we came out with this kit um, to, you know, really promote their upcycling messaging that we're always about, you know, that dyeing something, dyeing for shirts that you own with dye reduces your carbon emissions by 74% versus buying four new t-shirts. So we're always recommending if the color is fading that you, you know, dye instead of buy. Don't buy it, dye it. Exactly. It's, uh, it's been our slogan since 1917. <laughs> yeah. And I would say black is one of the most obvious shades that really does fade. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have countless amounts of black clothing that are gray now. And so I, I'm constantly using this back to black kit to bring it back to a vibrant black. Yeah. And you know, every time you wash your jeans or anything for that matter, um, especially with the laundry machine and dryer, like they are very rough on your clothes. And, um, you know, it was made back in the day when people were still working on in the dirt, but like our yeah. clothes don't really need that much agitation anymore. So, um, Oftentimes I see more fading like faster. Um, and our kit also comes with, this kit comes with uh, fixative, which is what we just went over before, because it's again, super important. And actually, which we're not using and we're, you know, daredevils here, comes with gloves to protect your hands so that they don't get stained with dye. Um, yeah, my hands are always naturally stained, so. Yeah, but I the number of times I've seen you with purple hands. <laughs> and the fact that I have gloves right here, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to fill up the sink. Um, I'm not going to bother with some large tote that I have to like carry around. I'm just going to fill the sink up with hot water. Yeah, so we recommend if you have one of these large basin sinks or even a sink that's divided. Yeah, or like a, you know, laundry sink or something. Yeah, it's really, really such an easy way to, to dye your clothing. Yeah. 
Um, okay, I'm gonna get this wet so that we get a nice even coverage when we um when it's time to die. Jonathan is going to help move it over. Right. And I'm not going to go too crazy. Um, I've already washed these jeans once before. Um, I'm just getting them damp now. And we're going to wait for the water to fill up a little bit. This. So for this, we'll be adding salt, right? Yes, because this is cotton, we'll be adding salt to the dye bath, um, which we have here. We'll add about a cup of salt, and that will help to um, find the dyes on here. Right. So I'll this side for now. Maybe as that fills up. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I'm sending with this up. So we can add the salt now, right? And then yeah. dye? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you already explain the salt? Uh, the positives? Is, no, I didn't. <laughs> Please take that away. All right. So a lot of people are like, why do you need salt? Um, it's for seasoning. The jeans really like to be salty. <laughs> Uh, totally kidding. Um, <laughs> that sucks. Oh. But basically, it hey, Chris, is, we, can, um, we can hear you, but the video yeah. has paused. There yeah. we go. Oh, it yeah. changed the time. Back. Yes. There we go. Sorry about that. Can't be alive. It doesn't have a technical difficulty. That would be. <laughs> Unheard of. Mm -hmm. All right, so back to the salt. Um, salt is, is it positively charged, right? The salt is positively charged and the cotton is negatively charged. So basically adding the salt helps to make the dye a little bit um, more negative so that it combines um, with the positively charged cotton. It's like, a, Opposites attract, you know. Um, like this is a little additional um, thing that we can put in to make sure that the dye really, really penetrates into the fibers. There's already a lot of salt in here, but we just it like, really just yeah. seals the deal. It makes the colors much more vibrant when you add salt. All right, I think we're ready. Yeah. That's my favorite part. Oh no. Okay. Ooh. Look at that. And another tip is if you want to get as dark as color possible, double the dye quantity, which is why I put this entire bottle in instead of just half. Um, oh, that's a tip I've never seen. Fill the bottle up with water in order to get more oh. dye out. You clearly don't have hair and have never ran out of shampoo or conditioner uh -huh. in the shower. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got our dye bath. We've got a whole bottle of jet black in there and half a cup of salt. We've got hot water, not too hot. This is, I would say it's like 120 and Jonathan also added some water from the kettle as well to make it a little bit hotter. And we're just gonna go right for it. So the first thing you wanna remember is that you don't want this just sitting in the dye bath. You want this, you wanna be stirring it consistently for the first 30 minutes. Yeah, um, as I said, if it's sitting, then the dye doesn't get applied to the fabric evenly. And so then you would get an inconsistent uh, result and it wouldn't be solid. Exactly. And you'll see, we have more than enough water, more than enough dye in here so that the fabric can move freely and move around and dye can get to all the different places of the fabric evenly. And, you know, typically I like to dye things. I mean, it, it kind of depends. The, the two main things that will, well, I guess there's three main things that will impact uh, color. 
there's the duration of how long you're dying, how hot the water is, and then how much you know your die to, to a water ratio is. And one thing to note when you're dying is uh, the fabric will look darker when wet. I think, Helena, you mentioned that earlier, mm -hmm. but it is a little bit of, um, uh, I don't know, a trick sometimes. Yeah. Where you think you've achieved the color that you want, but then once you wash it, it, you will get a lighter color. So we typically recommend going a little bit darker than what you're you know, thinking. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to do like a little okay. swatch test if possible. Um, you know, even with a paper towel and like let the paper towel like air dry a little bit and you'll kind of, you'll kind of get the same idea. Um, so if it's too late, add more dye. If it's too dark, add more water. It's kind of a like trial by error type of situation. It's kind of like baking or right? <laughs> yeah. Um, recipe. Exactly. Um, and you can already tell like the color is. I would say, what is the average amount of time you dye like a pair of jeans you spend? Honestly, it depends on how hot of water I'm using. If I'm using water that's like too hot that I can't even like touch it, I would say like 15 minutes. Okay. Especially if it's 100% cotton. And then if it's like kind of more warm to the touch and like from the sink, like this is right now, I would. I would be inclined to leave it in for a little bit longer than uh, you want. And would you say you have to stir the whole time or <sighs> you know, do you think that you can leave it sitting for any point of the time? I think about after the first like 15 to 20 minutes that you can just kind of let it sit. Um, but don't let it sit like- Too long, yeah. Don't let it sit like this, right? Like having one side out and one side in. Like if you're just going to leave it, um, after stirring it, make sure everything is submerged and not like crumpled up or folded over onto one another because that is how you'll get some of those um, splotches. Yeah. But also, I was going to say you don't want to leave it sitting for too long because then you will get that uneven coverage. So maybe a couple minutes, take a break, grab some water. <laughs> right. This is actually so therapeutic. This I I love dying. Do you ever listen? Do you have a playlist that you listen to? Yes, it's the it's called um the sound of the dye bath and, and I just I, I don't know I like listening to the water I don't like listening to music as much when I'm working for some reason I find it to be like overstimulating. <laughs> yeah, you're listening to the fabric. Exactly, I'm listening to what it needs and how she wants to be treated. <laughs> All right, that is looking pretty good. And would you say jeans typically are? Mostly cotton, right? You don't have to worry oh. about using dye more when you're dyeing jeans. Yeah, especially if it's like, you know, true denim, then it's almost always cotton. But it was it was a little tricky in like the early 2014. Oh. Sorry, we're having a little bit of lag there. I think it's back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and back in 2014, when we were messing around with uh, or wearing... Um, skinny stretchy jeans a lot of those were like 50 percent cotton and 50 percent polyester because it needed to be stretchy like for those i would probably use dye more mm -hmm. because there was so much elastic inside and with dye more we don't actually have a black we have what's called graphite and which i can grab and show you graphite is the closest here it is graphite's the closest um, you'll be able to get to black. It's just due to the nature of dyeing synthetics. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just not achievable to get that dark, dark black. Trust me, we've been wanting a black forever and we still can't figure it out. But if you double the dye quantity, you can get to a very dark shade. In fact, in certain sort of fabric um, scenarios, like different uh, blends, you can pretty much get black yeah. with graphite. And if you check out our website or our page, like how to get as dark as color as possible, we also include, um, you know, if you're trying to over dye a red garment um, with, there we go. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. If you're trying to dye a red garment into a true black, um, there are other undertones and other colors that you can add to the graphite that will help to cancel out the red. Um, if you think about the color wheel, the opposite side of red is green. So you want to add a little bit of green to the graphite in order to get um, closer to black if you're dyeing something red, that is. So you kind of yeah. have to think about color theory, take it back to, you know, grade school and... Or just yeah. rely on our website because we've done all the work for you and helped you figure it out. Right. 
And that also that applies to if you're using black as well, right? Mm -hmm. You know, adding secondary color to combat that undertone. Yeah. And again, this is just referring to if you're dyeing something that already has an existing color, like something that's red or yellow or green. We, uh, you can definitely dye it so that it will be black. It's just a matter of if you really want the best result possible is adding that secondary color. And that link should be in our, uh, somewhere I believe in the comments or we have posted the link for, for you. There's two links actually. One is how to get the darkest color possible. And then another was just our general how to dye page. And on there, um, you can learn how to dye based on the type of fabric you're dyeing or on the type or the method, whether it's the stove top method or the bucket method or dyeing with your washing machine. Um, I do want to call out here that because this is all purpose and made for cotton and oftentimes um, denim and a lot of clothes um, use synthetic reds for the actual um, stitching, the stitching most of the time not take i have had seldom times when the stitching was actually see that um taking the dye so like i actually prefer that because on jeans it's always the you know iconic like stitching like that um, did you say that marital <laughs> <laughs> possibly right. um but yeah just something to know and if you wanted the stitching to dye um, you could also throw in some dye more into this dye bath and uh, up the temperature by like a lot and the thread should take. But again, I really like the contrast stitch look. Um, I've seen some people go in with like a Sharpie afterwards. I do not recommend that. Something that's great about black dye is like, if, for instance, if you were dyeing something like green and you got dye on you, you could just dye everything black. Yes. It's really such a great tool to be able to like keep the clothes that you love and with a very sharp color. All right. I have not been keeping track of time, but what it's do you been there for a good amount of time? I mean I also don't visually. love a, you know, I like a little bit of I don't love like black black for jeans. Personally. Yeah. All right. Again, if you want like the super, super, super black. I would recommend using water from the stove top. Um, this is just from the sink, but you know, it's I'm, pretty black. I'm feeling pretty good about this. So yeah. we're going to go ahead and just, um, you know what? Pull the plug. Pull the use plugs, the plugs. But because this is black. Oh, you don't want to use the back to black kick plug? <laughs> we'll see this one. <laughs> oh, there we go again. <laughs> To, and this is a very great example of why I love dyeing in the sink as opposed to um, like another receptacle. You know, having to like take a giant bin and pour it in here causes a lot of splashing. Um, Brit dye is non toxic and it's septic safe, obviously. Um, so sewer and septic safe. Sewer and septic safe. Yeah. So it is totally okay to do this. And I know probably some of you are freaking out about the dye in the sink, but don't worry. This is not my first rodeo. Our friend Bleach <laughs> is right here to help us. Yes. Um, but we like to come with that at the very, very end because if you even get like a speck of bleach on the clothes, it's just game over. You have to start over again, essentially, because bleach is... Let's go to the front view. Yeah. So we don't keep hitting these freezing issues. Hi again. Hello, everyone. <laughs> We're still here. <laughs> so now Helene is washing the jeans out, getting rid of the bleach. I mean, getting rid of the black stains in the sink. And, uh... I think one thing you've taught me, which is really nice, which you can't fully see from the camera, is when you uh, put the fabric on the base of the sink and just push. It really squeezes out the unabsorbed dye instead of having to hold it in your arms and try and finagle with it and get it underneath the stream of water. Just putting it on the bottom of the sink and pushing really just helps get that unabsorbed dye out of the fabric. Yeah, this is also a uh, a workout, an arm workout. <laughs> so you can um, feel free to skip your gym day today. <laughs> yeah, this is your Tabata. <laughs> All right, 
So with the black dye, and especially with jeans as big as these, there's going to be a lot of um, camera over a little. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of dye bleeding out. And it's going to feel like you're rinsing and rinsing and rinsing and nothing is like it's not going anywhere. And that's where fixative is so, so, so important. Because right now, can we flip over to the um, overhead just so that we yeah. can show them how much dye is bleeding yeah. out of the air? Let's see if it works. Thanks for your patience, guys. We're still trying to figure this out. Yeah, so you see all that dye coming out. And it's just, it's never ending. It's not going to get anywhere if you just continue like this. And this is. So with fixative, it pulls the unabsorbed dye out of the fabric, right? Yeah, and honestly, a lot of people will complain, like, oh, like, the dyes are bleeding and it's not um, absorbing. Yeah, and it's like, well, the rinsing out part is so, so, so important. I would say it's like just as important as the actual dyeing process. Okay. Are you gonna do fix it? Up? Yeah, I'm just gonna okay. put her up and you're gonna see how dirty this water gets, but let's not, let's not get freaked out about it. You want to add it in? Sure. Let's turn the logo. <laughs> All right. Added a six of it. And now I'm just going to kind of agitate it in here and let it kind of get all over. So yeah, again, fixative is really important to um, enhance the color and extend the life of the color. So you can uh, lead to a lot more washes where the color will pretty much stay as vibrant as it is when you dyed it. Mm -hmm. You can see all that unabsorbed dye here. This is how it's supposed to look. Like all the dye that did not get absorbed into the cotton fibers is now um, suspended in the fixative dye bath. I'm going to keep agitating it until I feel like it's really gotten in there. Usually 10, 15 minutes doing this? Yeah, honestly, at this point, I've been kind of eyeballing it, but yeah, 10, 15 minutes, I think, is a good standard. Um, and you really don't need that much fixative. A little goes a long way. Kind of think of it as like detergent, almost. You need like almost like what was it, two tablespoons, I think. Typically, we, we recommend four ounces per three gallons, but I guess it's not as important the amount of you know, like to make sure the fabric's moving freely as it is with the dye. So, if you did less gallons, so if you did like one and a half, then you just need you yeah, know, two ounces. Totally. Like, this is way less water than what we had in our actual dye bath. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, looks so dark. <laughs> Definitely more than how it started. Oh, yes. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the fixative dye bath that is uh, that we're draining right now. And then this is kind of my favorite part to show the non-believers of fixative is what the rinse water looks like after we're done doing the fixatives. All right, we'll clean up. When you rinse, do you use hot water or cold water? Cold water, we wanna use cold water. So I'm pulling it all the way towards me. Um, 
You want to use cold water because the hot water will just make the dyes reabsorb into the fabric. And right now we're just trying to get all the dyes. Look at that. The water, we say usually that the rinse water needs to run clear. And I don't really notice anything coming out of the, the jeans right now. Yeah. I mean, the sink is dirty, so maybe that's what you're seeing. But yeah, I mean, look at that. I, I not, not like before when you were pushing down right. and getting all that black dye out of there. Like there's no residual dye left really on these jeans. And, you know, in order to do that without fixative, I would have had to sit here probably for 20 minutes, breaking a sweat, like doing everything by hand and trying to squeeze stuff out. Um, it also uses so much more water that way. This way, you're not, you know, just letting the water run. You're just kind of letting it soak in the fixative dye bath and using a fixed amount of water as opposed to just an endless a mess. All right. I mean, you good. Yeah, I don't really. This is pretty much how much um, dye comes out of jeans that you would have bought at a store. Um, you know, when you buy black jeans and you wash them for the first time, not always. Um, Perfect. So it's going to leave a little bit of um, residual dye in your water as well. And that's why they always suggest rinsing darks with darks. But yeah, I mean, this is looking much better than the uh, previous yeah. dye that, that we were in. And so at this point, I would throw these into the dryer or hang dry. I always recommend hang dry just because. You guys know how I feel about the dryer. Um, oops. So yeah, I prefer to hang dry, but you can also just throw these into the dryer with an old towel um, that will kind of help to speed up the drying process. Okay. And here we go. So dark. Wow. So dark. No black dripping off of it. It's honestly just water at this point. And what size are these? These are. I don't know. <laughs> they're my size. Them? I want them. Uh, Twenty-eight. Uh, Rats. They're my size. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are actually really cute. I might wear them. Um, we. We'll try these. Yeah. And then yeah. <laughs> and then we will go back to our vinegar test if you guys want. Um I know we save this for the very, very end here. Um let's just rinse it out and see what we're working with. And then we'll clean out the sink and show you guys how we do that. Go back to the overhead. Yeah. All right, as a reminder, we have vinegar on this side and no vinegar on this side. And this is wool, which likes vinegar. This is the vinegar side that I'm rinsing out. And this is the non-vinegar side. You don't want to agitate it too much um, because wool fibers are pretty delicate and will felt up if you agitate it too much, especially with hot water. Um, here I'm just using cold water, so I'm not too concerned. The vinegar side. I think so. And everything dries lighter, so I'm going to try to get as much water out of here as possible that I can show you guys.
this is the non vinegar side. Yeah, this is the vinegar side. Oops. Oh, yeah. So, non vinegar, vinegar. Huh? Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's all the difference. Yeah. I mean, again, you were using hot water. Right. You were using dye, so it's going to die well, but the vinegar just adds that little bit of mm, Yeah, get exactly. Um, again, it's not like a huge difference, but it does make a difference. Um, and yeah. What are you going to knit with that? I don't know. Okay. Beanie? <laughs> Maybe a little vest. Oh. Huh. Right. Let's cheer for that. Can you paint the sink a little bit? Oh, you wanted to show oh, I don't how think the beach works? Ah, there it, it is. It works. It works. We promise. <laughs> if not, you can check out our um, Instagram where I'm constantly dying in this yeah. sink. Um, and you can look at the videos because I always make sure to clean the sink in the videos because people get really angry. Again, we've uh, we've posted some some links in here. Our how to die page, which is a really great tool, it has so much great information, videos, tutorials on how to just use our products. And then also we shared our how to get as dark a color as possible tips page, which has a bunch of tips that we covered here today. And it's just a great tool for just making sure you get the best result possible. We truly thank you so much for joining us. We had a great time. So much fun. Yeah. And we can't wait. I think we'll be back here in maybe a month and a half. Yeah. Months for another class. And this was our first class. Hope I think it went okay. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we had a few overhead camera problems, but I think it went pretty well. Yeah. We had a great time. And thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you.